you are welcome to another episode of LFN What's Your Say? The number one listening show where we discuss real issues with real people like you. We are still featuring R. Kelly. Real name Robert Sylvester Kelly. Also known as the R&B King. One of the strangest facts about the case against R. Kelly is that for the first time in American history, a defendant was assumed guilty before trial, an action against the normal procedure in which all defendants are supposed to be assumed innocent before they have been proven guilty. This is known as the rule of presumption of innocence which should never be violated. A translation of this into a simpler and more understandable phrase is guilt must be proved and not innocence. It's therefore usually the burden of the prosecution to prove that the defendant is guilty. So however much the prosecution or any other party may be convinced that a person is guilty, they need to come up with proof without which a defendant cannot and should not be convicted. There are several principles that the Department of Justice must understand and protect in the interest people's civil liberties and freedoms. The first being that all people in the U.S. are considered innocent regardless of their religion, gender, race or personal interests. This is the rule of fairness which does not allow special laws to be upheld for certain groups and not for others. And given that the law should be applied equally to everyone, this means that all people are entitled to the law's protection and procedural fairness. Note that procedural fairness is more concerned with the procedures used in decision making rather than the outcomes. Meaning that even if a person is truly guilty of let's say theft, If the process used to arrive at the conclusion is illegal, the rule of procedural fairness has been abused and therefore the defendant will be acquitted, as the evidence gathered through wrong methods immediately becomes inadmissible. Prosecutors therefore must ensure that they do not go breaking the laws of this country while trying to prove that defendants are guilty. The law requires that a proper and legally acceptable procedure be used when arriving at a decision that a defendant is guilty or not. Secondly, the presumption of innocence rule makes it the burden of the accuser to prove that the defendant is guilty beyond reasonable doubt. And I repeat, beyond reasonable doubt. And because of this requirement by law, the accused does not have to prove their innocence, but rather the burden of proof lies entirely on the accuser. The reason why this principle is important for fairness is because it does not disadvantage the accused if the accuser is a person of higher status or power in which circumstances they would make it so difficult for the accused to gather proof of innocence like they did with R. Kelly when they successfully denied him bail, something that would allow him prepare for his case from the outside. Thankfully it wasn't his role to prove his innocence because this would have hampered the process even before the trial started. The presumption of innocence therefore demands that the accused is informed of the charges he is dealing with early enough, given a chance to prepare a good defense, and finally granted a fair trial. Imagining the absence of the presumption of innocence and instead a presumption of guilt is cause for serious concern. This is when false accusations become upheld as truth, and the accused will therefore be considered deserving of a punishment even before trial proceedings, a situation which threatens the freedom of the accused. What the presumption of innocence envisaged was the fact that people lie and give false evidence, a consideration that was sadly completely ignored when it came to the case against R. Kelly. The presumption of innocence is a right that we are all supposed to enjoy equally irrespective of whether you happen to be a celebrity or not, rich or poor, no one should be treated differently. There is a particular video that catches my interest where famous vlogger Vlad was hosted by Math Hoffa. The same day he told the world how he did an interview with R. Kelly that he will not be releasing anyway. During this conversation he spoke about R. Kelly's celebrity status in a discriminatory manner that assumes because he has registered so much success in his life and career, the yardstick used in correcting him will be different from that used on other American citizens. We also know that during the jury selection process at the beginning of the New York trial, jurors who could not draw a line between fairness and prejudice were accepted onto the panel, and there is no doubt they did deliver exactly what they promised and that was prejudice him. By allowing these jurors on the panel, his presumption of innocence was already taken away from him and for this reason, the end result which was the all guilty judgment and the subsequent 30 year sentence do not matter anymore. For as long as the violation of his presumption of innocence can be proven at appeal, then the verdict will be overturned. According to Benjamin, 
there is no doubt R. Kelly was in fact prejudiced and his presumption of innocence before being proven guilty right taken away. It all started when the surviving R. Kelly documentary which was done outside the law and strategically before he was arrested and subsequently indicted aired. The real investigation should in fact be aimed at proving the connection between government and the making of the surviving R. Kelly which alone is enough evidence to prove a conflict of interest that could not allow justice to prevail. I took note when you said that the presumption of innocence rule in fact requires that a defendant be proved guilty beyond reasonable doubt, something that did not happen with R. Kelly. The only evidence government was able to present was witness testimony which according to what we have learned can be falsified. And indeed new evidence shows that these witnesses lied a great deal both in the media and under oath. How witness statements from individuals that have been proven to be perpetual liars can be used as the last line of evidence to prove a man guilty is still hard for many of us to contemplate. What about the element of beyond reasonable doubt? Just what happened to the rule of presumption of innocence until proven guilty? Just why did Judge Ann Donnelly and her jury of 12 choose to believe these women? Why do they believe their stories and not R. Kelly's? This is definitely because by the time they got into the courtroom, they already believed he was guilty and would not consider any possibility that these women could have been lying. I am glad however to note that for some of the witnesses, the crackdown on their lies started at trial. Lisa Van Allen for example was bombarded questions she never was ready for, bursting her bubble to reveal the truth about her lies. The same was done with Chicago accuser Rashonda Landfair. I feel if we had Bon Jean on the New York case, Azrael and Faith Rogers would have been busted as well. And perhaps we wouldn't be having this conversation today. As R. Kelly becomes a victim of social and judicial prejudice, we ought to remember one thing, and that's that people will lie at every opportunity. And especially if they have lied before, there is usually nothing to stop them from doing it again. It's therefore only fair that R. Kelly be granted a retrial, or that his case is closed and charges dropped to return him to the freedom he legally deserves. The government should not get away with violating the rule of innocence before anyone is proven guilty. If you wish to take part in a live interview discussing any of these topics, let us know by sending an email to sashalfnmedia at gmail.com for scheduling. Thank you for watching today's video a production of LFN Media, giving you another perspective of issues at hand. We make it our business to keep you updated with the truth amidst the cloud of lies the media wants you to believe. It is therefore important to subscribe to this channel, hit the bell icon and allow all notifications so that you don't miss out whenever we publish a new video.